He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. Hey everybody, welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest Jamie Kennedy. Welcome to the show. Hey buddy, how are you? I We had just done a gig together for Adam Hunter at a place called The Dime. Yes. And we were all hanging out and I said, hey, would you do my show? And you said yes. And I have to say, I'm going to tell the truth because you want all the truth. I wasn't sure that you'd actually remember me. Oh, is it on? Are we on? Oh yes, we're on. Okay, you can share. Go ahead, share. Let me see. You're going to share. We're all on Facebook Live now. So this is really cool. So if you're on Facebook Live and you want to ask a question, just ask one and I'll try to pay attention. Doesn't say live here. It, it'll take. Uh, it's on there live. Then refresh. I did. Okay. Well, it'll be just a second. Oh, All here right. it is. It says play. We can play it. I guess it's not exactly live live. All right. All right maybe I should play it. Oh, okay. And then it'll be live, live as we're doing it live. This is so exciting. So everybody's learning. Oh, th th now it's now talking. I can't hear them. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Okay. Um, so we were standing in front of the Dime, which is a place that uh, Adam Hunter runs, and it's a club where comedians like you and myself come in, and we do work on new material, or we go because we want to play and fool around, or you meet new comics that are doing new things that we don't know anything about. Yes. And I didn't know that you. I said, "Oh, that's Jamie Kennedy." I didn't know that you'd remember me. Yes. But I, you know, and you were you were just. How could I forget you? I know. Well, but there's two. Co you're, he's probably one of the first people I ever started comedy with. In the early 90s. Well, did you ever play the, the Natural Fudge? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yes. The Natural Fudge was like the original hippie den. Uh-huh. With Brenda. And uh, now it's like a food market. A yeah, small, it's like, a, Yeah, Kingston. it's on Fountain. It's gone. Yeah, it's like a small, like, little Mexican food market. And, uh, but I used to play the Rose Tattoo, which was the... Oh, yeah. The premier cabaret open mic and it was you know a gay cabaret and it was the most nicest club in town that wasn't a comedy club it was fun because you could it was a different audience amazing M very sophisticated very sophisticated but a mix of you know exactly you know gay men and older p producers going in there with their sneaky side girls you know and desperate actors and comedians and all types of people it was awesome but there was another comedian named gary stewart do you remember Gary? I don't remember. He used to do this joke about Phil, um, Paul Lynn singing Phil Collins, and he would go, Thew, 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 Do you remember him? <laughs> he was hilarious. No. He go, I, thew, thew, you know, thew, I, I was so frightened doing comedy all the time. I was always so scared that yes. I was going to get caught for being gay or I was going to get caught for something. You were something. worried about someone oh. figuring it out. Yeah, totally. First uh, 10 years. Did you think it was hard to, for people to say that? Uh, I think that I was totally insane. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> you see, we're not supposed. Everything is happening. All the technical. Oh my God, this is really exciting. Um, so, I don't know the beginnings of your career. First, how they did were you with you? <laughs> did you start as a comic NK or as an cabaret. actor? Um, I started I w as an extra in Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. Yeah, so that's crazy. It wasn't really with him, but I, he was in it. it was Were you in the shower scene that you can watch and see <laughs> the guys fighting and see Matt Damon naked? That's his first naked Wait, Matt Damon? I don't think he was in that one. Yes, he is. He's in the scene in the shower where he fights. Please, I know because I... He was an extra? No, he was a lead. One of the leads in the film. He one of the kids. Uh, Not the lead. No, lead, I think that was the other one. Well, Brendan Fraser is the lead. No, that's the other movie. School Ties. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I knew that one. Oh my God! I've been Jason. masturbating to the wrong film. Oh, that happens. Um, <laughs> and you have new you have new material to masturbate to. But I have his real. The, the, I shouldn't even be talking about this. Anyway, wow. Because you're, you're comedians on the show, and all of a sudden I'm losing it. I'm supposed to be a, a no. Uh, oh, you're <laughs> you're supposed to be professional. You just said you masturbated the school. Class. I know. I shouldn't have said that. I mean. Yeah, but now he has a picture on the line that's completely. It's much clearer too. Okay. I don't know how that happened. Um. Oh God, Dead Poets Society. Yes, that I was, was an extra in that. What was that like? I mean, they shot it in Boston, did they not? Delaware. Oh, Delaware. Okay. I grew up in Philly, and I was working at a Pizza Hut, and I had just graduated high school, and uh, no Domino's, excuse me, but I also did work at a Pizza Hut, and a woman. I took a local acting class. And I said, I gotta try acting, 
And I did it, and a lady in my class and my friend's mom knew that this production was coming, and she was an extra. And she says, I think I can get you to be an extra. And I go, what's that? And she goes, it's called being a background artist. And I'm like, what is a background artist? She's like, you know, we really fill in the whole essence of the scene. And so I'm she like, thought maybe I'm painting paintings while they're doing the thing. And I'm like, well, it's an extra. It was like, as I learned later, it's glorified extra work. But uh -huh. so I went down, I met with them, and uh, they looked at me, and they said, will you cut your hair? And I said, yeah. They shaved my hair. I got 60 bucks a day and all the meals I can eat. And within probably two hours, I was at the craft service table getting a carrot. <laughs> and I look over, and Robin Williams says, it's getting like a muffin. And it was like. That was the most bizarre thing. And once I was on that set, I knew that I this is what I was supposed to do. Yeah, that's when I started. Well, you went. I mean, a couple of years later, you did Romeo and Juliet. I mean, that, that was a lot. But six years later, but that was a whole other. I had to go through a whole. I had to learn what Hollywood was. And you had done a series called California Dreaming. And did you start as a comic or did you start as an actor? Is it both? So I, I moved out to L.A. and I was going to be extra work. So I tried to get extra work, and I didn't realize how competitive extra work was. <laughs> And yeah, it's like a lot of work. So then Buddy Holly story. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. I also cut off all my hair. Wow. Yeah, thinking that I was going to get that one line, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's what you do. You work up as a, you start as an extra, then you work as a feature, then you got yeah. a one line. I mean, I know all of the links up. So anyway, I wanted. I loved Mike Myers. I loved Eddie Murphy, and I wanted to do s improv. So I started doing auditioning for improv and then I wanted to join I wanted to do improv and I went to the groundlings and I saw they 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 were like yo you gotta pay and I was like pay there's like these groups that will let you in if you don't have to pay and they're like well you have to pay <laughs> and you have to go to the school and I'm like well, I don't want to go to the school I did that with the groundlings too well yeah I mean and it obviously works for people but I was like I don't have any money and I can just audition and they're like no you gotta pay to learn <laughs> And I'm like, well, I think I'm already learning. So then I started researching stand-up. I did stand-up. And my first gig ever was at the Beverly Garland Hotel in NoHo. You know that place. Yes, 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 yes. They had a contest, and I won second place. And I said, bam, I'm a comedian. How, ma how long have you been doing stand-up? For a long time. Oh, you did before you 20, got the second? 27 no, 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 I mean, how long did you do it when you Never. That was my first gig. And you got it? second place oh my god i was very lucky but then uh, the next time i went on i bombed horrifically and then after that I always and the next like 35 sets bomb boo terrible people don't realize that because the first one set, set you do to is 35 terrible exactly well but that's what happens because you're tr you're trying to recreate that set mm -hmm. and instead of being in the moment it's the same thing and people don't realize that but so then i started i stopped i started i stopped i went to the la then i started the la cabaret that was our place right that it's was no Ray Bishop. It, yep, with Ray, I would call, and then I that four to seven slot, Keith Michael Ashton, uh -huh. and he said, "Come on out with me, dog, and we'll go out there." And I went, and it was like you get five minutes, and I would do like the Monday, Tuesday, I would do those cocktail hour shows, and that's how I started. Oh man! Yeah. So how did Romeo and Juliet? I mean, that was like Shakespeare for a kid from Philly. So that was like nuts. Leonardo DiCaprio, Claire Danes, yes. uh, John Le Leguizamo. I mean. You know, just, I mean. It was, well, it was like, it's like things start happening. They start popping. So I was doing stand-up, and I started doing that. I did all the open mics. That's where I would see you. And, you know, you do that. And you do that for about two, two and a half years, three years. Yeah. And then you. More than that. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Because for some of us. <laughs> well, no, you do it, and you see, and then, you, and then you'd have to audition at the improv. I was telling people the other day how the improv had the Third Street Club. Remember in Santa Monica? Oh my God! Yeah, and they had the best best Christmas parties there ever. The best, and you would go and you would play that that would like one thirty on a Monday night. New faces, it was awesome. And so you would do that, and then I started like getting into like you know a spot here and a spot there, and then you start doing showcases and stuff. And then I was at the factory. I got on Laugh Factory for those who don't know. Yes, and uh, then an agent saw me, and then I uh, I got an audition. Who was the agent? Uh, it was Estelle. I used to do a joke about her because she was like a little commercial agent. Uh -huh. And um, I don't even remember. Estelle, she just talked like this. And I went in, and anyway, she started sending me out for commercials. And then eventually I got a commercial. So it was like through stand-up, I met an agent, 
auditioned for her, got in. Well, you were a cute young kid. It was funny. And Thank you. You had everything I didn't have. I hate you. You're wonderful. Um, <laughs> but I want to know, Leonardo DiCaprio, that's... Well, after, that, after auditioning, then you get... That's nuts. Up. Well, then I started get, Then I got an agent, and then I started auditioning, and then I got an audition for Romeo and Juliet. And then... Well, was it daunting because it was Shakespeare? That's what it scared the shit out of me. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, no, because I didn't know I had that many lines. But yeah, but <laughs> I gotta we say, just cut the bro, I mean, two minutes, it, was, it was a two minute sign. Bro, I saw that it was nine almost, hours ago. It was like just a t- <laughs> I'm sorry to people at home, but he's throwing this two minute sign. Dude, the minute you move, I can see it. It was, it was like gong right. show. People missed it. Yeah, I didn't have that many lines, so I knew I could handle it, but I did rehearse it a ton, yes. So it was daunting, but also exciting. Baz Luhrmann, what was it like working with him? Um, He's, you know, it was my first, my second movie ever. My first was this independent movie that no one's ever heard of, but that was my second movie, but it's almost like my first movie. Um, he, I was very spoiled when I first started because I had so much freedom. Oh yeah, you, you, well, you, were, with, you weren't afraid. Well, yeah. Well, also, I work with all tours, you know. So Baz, David O. Russell, Frank Oz, you know, different people like this. Who Ben Younger, who write direct. So Baz is an all tour. So at the end of the day, it's you know, artist, actor, singer, dancer first. And so he was very freeing. And and uh, there were times I felt stiff, and he was like, you know, you just gotta do what you want to do. And he was very freeing. It was amazing. Hmm. We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back here. This is like a real show. Yeah, it is. Uh, We're going to be right back with Jamie Kennedy on Absolute Jason Stewart, and we're going to talk about more of the things that I forgot that he remembers. I like to sing, dance, pretend, and I like to have fun, 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 And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically no- naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew <laughs> hi. Oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> if only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. if someone like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, when I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your <laughs> No! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. I started. Hi, I'm Moxie. And I'm Nicole. And we're the ladies of Suicide, Suicide Girls, Girls Radio, Radio, the world's leading BYOB radio show. Pour a glass of your favorite tipple and tune in on Wednesday nights between 8 and 9 p.m. as we discuss life, liberty, and the pursuit of free nipples. I just flash it would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? People think flashing your tits is easy, right? And it's actually kind of hard. And we're back at Aptly Jason Stewart with my guest, Jamie Kennedy. And we're talking about the early part of his film career, which is really, honestly, so exciting. Clock, uh, clock Watchers? I thought you were going to say Clockwork Orange. <laughs> yes, remember when you were that. in that? I was not in that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think you were born yet. No, right around there. You got a birthday coming up, 25th. I do. 25th of May. Um, and Don Viner just uh, put a little comment there. And also... Um, What's up, Don? Hey, Don. And also, uh, Eamon. Eamon's a uh, comedian and actor. And okay. he's, a, he's a friend of the show. FOS. <laughs> FOS, yes. So, so, Clock Watchers, I remember that's one of the films when I was like falling in love with independent films and becoming so... I thought you were going to say a woman. 
Nah. In this cast. Nah. Right, well, Lisa ahead. Kudrow, how can you not fall in love with her? Yeah, she was great. Yeah, now that was a real, real catch. Did you see that film? Yeah. I love and that you Mara, saw that film. You're going to be very, even Jake can tell you, I'm like completely a cinephile. I love film. I love independent film. I mean, my first independent film that I just, probably the first one that I saw was uh, Cassavetti, certainly a woman on the influence. I was in acting class at, at uh, 14 years old, and he said, if you want to act, you have to go see this movie. This is an incredibly Peter Falk and Jenna Rowland's raw performance, and that was the first time I think a uh, director of indep independent film got nominated for Best Director. Really? I think. I can't say for sure, but I think. Yeah. yeah. That, I haven't seen that in a while, but I remember it was an amazing film. And that was probably another artur of some sort. Too. Yeah. yeah. And then Scream. Yes. Which is the beginning of your numbered films. <laughs> Scream was... <laughs> well, it was Romeo and Juliet, and then I got Scream, and then I got Clock Watchers. Did you think that Scream was going to... Did anybody even know, you know, that Scream was going to be the incredible hit and in franchise that it was? Did you, did you even have feel it at all? I remember I was training for uh romeo and juliet to get like in shape. training training so yes. i was like like i was working writing at the hollywood at that jim on la Brea and just not oh uh, yeah that was i used to go there to yeah, meet guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh i saw you in the steam room yeah. all right um that got awkward but yeah, yeah it did i looked the other way appreciate it but uh i i would run all the time and then i got a script for something called Scary Movie, that was the original title. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was. And then the 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 uh, spinoff or whatever or the no, parody film was, was called. It was Scary Movie, movie yeah. yeah. And um, I just remember reading it and going, "This is like, you know, scripts usually aren't very good, and let alone they aren't very easy to read because there's so much stuff in the log lines and it's just a lot of description. This was just all dialogue." all dialogue with like you know and then she's dragged through the door that was it like very simple i read the thing in like one treadmill and i was like and i was like i gotta get this audition and i got the audition and i just i went through an arduous process i got it but um when we were doing it we thought wow this could be really cool do we think it was going to be big i don't know if anybody realized how big it was going to be i mean the thing that i think is so impressive to me is that you were so a part of what I would call young Hollywood at that time. Mm -hmm. You were like, so what, did, did you feel that? I mean, w that was my fantasy to be that. I, <laughs> I mean, it really was, it was my fantasy to be a part, but I was so completely not the right type for anything, you know, until I came out and so that people could figure out where my, where I belonged. It, 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 it's, it's really nice because I think at that time in the early to mid 90s, mm -hmm. you know, you have who are a lot of the stars now of my age that are big stars TV are series and everything are. Yeah, are are were young at that time. And at that time, the town was making movies for my age group. So yeah. Romeo and Juliet, Scream, Clueless, Empire Records. Oh, were, I loved Empire Records. It was a good I auditioned, never got it, but man, audition never. They were making these great movies for that generation. They were making the craft. They were making you know all these different type of movies. You know, so can't well, hardly wait. So, oh was, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So there's yeah. all of these movies which are not being made right now. So I was fortunate to be at the age range at that time. They were making it. I mean, you went on to you know. A that I, that I as good as it gets now yes smaller part for you yes but to work with Jim L Brooks is like people don't realize is a fantasy come through for an actor did you work in a scene with Jack Nicholson because I don't remember yes I had a scene um, with Jack Nicholson and he's shouting something he's like talking to Skeet or something and I'm standing next to Skeet and Skeet uh, Ulrich Skeet Ulrich yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm impressed uh, that I know all that. <laughs> well, I mean, there's how many skeets do you know? Uh, <laughs> there's skeet the actor and then skeet the action. Yeah. But, um, yes, he, I just got to stand in the scene with him, and uh, it was pretty, you know, it's amazing. It's well, it's just, it's like, it, you know, you're in the business for 10 years, and all of a sudden you're in the film that wins Best Picture. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's like crazy. I know, I People know. People don't realize that the... the I've been in a film that's won Best Picture. Which one? I think it was that. 
Did it win? Oh, yes, it did. You're right. Did it win? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, won yeah. Best Actor for it. Best Actor, Best Actress, and I think it won Best Picture that year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. I had like 10 lines. It got cut down to one word, but I'll take it's it. my Will and Grace. But I'll take it. Oh, really? Yeah. You were on Will and Grace? Twice, guest star. And? One word. All right. And, one, and the other one was cut out completely. It happens. I mean, I just, I'm, you know, that from Dr. Doolittle too. to, I mean, the, just, you know, Three Kings, was, which was such a volatile film. I mean, the whole thing with George Clooney and him and David O. Russell. Yes. And David O. Russell, to me, is probably one of the most brilliant filmmakers around. He's amazing. And I'm just, I mean, that's like so my... Uh, what, what I love about David is that, you know, I think the more talented you are, the more free you are. And he is, you know, it's people that I've worked with that m in movies that you never heard of that are more like constrictive where David would let us run the scene and he would say, try it this way. And he would say, what would you say? And then he would say, try it like this. And he would try it like that. For me, that's a dream. Oh, know? yeah. I'm a comedian. Oh, I'm an please. actor. But some actors. We did the same thing on Judd Apatow's show, Love. We did the scene just as written. Uh -huh. And they said, do it again. And the guy says, just do it, everyone. Ah! You know, I'm like going, yes. That's amazing. That's oh, what yeah. it should be. You should try it. And, and then, yeah. Because then you, 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 you have choices. Also, it's a, it's a skill. Yes. You really ha it's a part we were talking before about doing PR and how comedians really, we had to learn how to do PR for our jobs, otherwise they wouldn't have us back. Yeah. And then it became that you had to do the same PR for independent films. Well, being able to improvise and be able to stay on book is both a skill that you have to have as an actor. Yeah. Now, if you're doing like the social network where it's like a really tight script and a story, then, you know, there's not a lot of room for improvisation. I get it. But, but that's when you rehearse. Uh, yeah. When I, Army Hammer, I work with on Birth of a Nation. And the first thing when I got friendly with him, I sat there and I said, what you actually. that name. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, well, Go ahead. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Army Coffee said to me, told sponsor. me the whole thing. He said he literally had to do some of the scenes a hundred times. And for those who don't remember, he played twins in the movie. Yeah. He literally, with uh, David Fincher, had to do it a hundred times, and he had to do the other voice, which was the twin, which he played twins. He, has to ha he had it in his head, so he said he was completely crazy by the end of the movie. Yeah, hearing his own voice. I mean, that's be, you know, the voices weren't that much different, but <laughs> he was great. Well, it's about being prepared. Yeah, hundred percent. So if you're doing that kind of film, you really want to rehearse because most films people don't know at home, you don't get to rehearse most of the time. No. Do you pay people to rehearse with you ever? If you have a big part in something? Pay them, no. Oh, you, I do. You pay them. Oh, I've, I've had friends or that I... Uh, why do you have to pay them? Well, some of them you have to pay. Why can't you just... Because I'm not as it. famous as you. And oh, they, they're you paying you. You're in a birth of a nation. Say, hey, listen, I, maybe I can get you in the film. <laughs> just lie. No, but I... I, I, I not everybody, but pay I have... But I have, I, I, I have said I want to rehearse I want to rehearse and I want this to be just you know especially on a film like that where the language has to be just right or doing the Shakespeare film where the language has to be just right a a are you still friendly with David Russell in any way I haven't seen him but I mean if I saw him I hopefully would you know get a nice hug <laughs> he's great I'm telling you I've worked with a lot of interesting people and uh, I am very fortunate when I think about it Oh my God! Yeah, I'm very fortunate. But now it's like you know. Did you realize it at the time? Do you think? Um, yes, you're fine. You know what we have. I know we have two minutes. <laughs> I know, I mean, we have. I am trying not to act like Can I see Can you just the cut sign. the camera to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> He's got this huge sign. Will you show it? And it's just like we see the damn sign. I mean, He's, God it's just thing. He has to. Has but to. he literally didn't think so you could see that. So for those at home, you ha your eyeball would literally have to be sealed shut not to see that. Thing. I was trying this to be really cool, like so a regular hilarious. host. I was. Why <laughs> just go with it? It's Facebook. See so it? Okay. You know. mm -hmm. All right. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna be right back, and we can see more of the. Uh, <laughs> Previews yes. for Jake's show yeah. uh, during the break. Wait, are these signs? Now we have one. Are minute. these signs like Rainbow Coalition? Look at these things. They're beautiful yeah. signs. Yeah, Look yeah, at these. yeah. I, the gay, these are signs from the 70s. They're so out of date <laughs> that a gay person wouldn't be caught dead with those signs. Okay. We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back here with Jamie Kennedy, yes. who I'm really excited having on my show. Started no, we haven't even started. Right here at Absolute Jason Stewart. Please stay with us. Don't change that channel. Oh my God.
an immersive rock and roll show ultimate jam night, which everybody needs to go to every single Tuesday at the Whiskey A Go Go. Chuck Wright! How did the ultimate jam night come about? Um, was that your brainchild? Yes, it was. Uh, what it were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I created a monster. about a social gathering and that's what this is about it's about rebuilding the community of musicians again because you know all the clubs are closing the DJs have taken over you know DJs can't jam I actually have a killer house band uh, with Matt Starr well, who, yeah you do well, Matt Starr from Mr. Big who helps mm -hmm. organize the thing and Mitch Perry from Edgar Winter Group and uh, we just brought on Walter Eno from Survivor um, and having Paul Z sing it We put other players with us, but we also put combination players mm -hmm. that have never played together before, like Nuno Betancourt from Extreme and Billy Sheehan from Mr. Cool. Big have never played together before, and they're up there just shredding off of each other. <laughs> we moved over to the Whiskey A Go Go, um, legendary venue, the only one in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, where I cut my teeth in Hollywood myself playing there. I was the guy putting up the, the posters for the shows on all the poles when you drive up Lower Canyon when I was a kid. Yeah, I started here. The concept for this uh, jam night was beyond just having the best musicians in LA play. I wanted to create a rock and roll circus. Organizing 40 to 70 musicians a week and not losing my mind. Rockstar is uh, that. Yeah. And we're back in Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest, Jamie Kennedy. And I want to say a shout out to my friend and co star from the film. 10 Attitudes, Joey Vieira in Australia is watching us. Hello, Joey. We're in Australia. So I want to say that it, you had this incredible success very quickly. Well, <coughs> five years in. Yeah, but that's really quickly. Come I on. agree. It took me 10 years, honestly, to I start agree. getting work. I agree. Yeah, but I, I didn't, I, I just, it was really, really hard. I do agree. And you had this tremendous success, to me, it sounds like, from the get-go. That there was just something uh, that you fit a certain space. You had this certain, and you're so funny to begin with, and you had this you, whatever the look is. And then you you did all these really cool kind of you know uh, artsy fartsy actorish kind of movies. And then you did you changed your whole career and did uh, with Ryan O'Neill mm -hmm. of all people. Mm -hmm. You did uh, Malibu's Most <coughs> Wanted. Yes. And now that changed the trajectory of your career. It really did. I think. Yes. Are you happy about that, or do you think it was a... How do you feel about it? I mean... Well, how do you feel about it? Seems I like think you it, have a lot. Well, I do have issues. I, it, you know, I have issues. Um, it's two things, because mm -hmm. number one, it made you this really breakout comedian. Okay. And then you got to tour. Mm-hmm. Which, and I don't know if you... Were you ready to headline at that time? Oh! Uh, you know what I mean by saying that? Because sometimes when somebody who's doing comedy, and they're doing comedy, they're in, you know, comedy is like, when you're around 10 years, that's about when you start to headline. Mm -hmm. And you need, it because you got to have that, you know, and you got to be able to do the time, deal with the checks being put down during the middle of your show. I was middling a lot. And sell tickets. Yeah, I was, I was yeah, because I was doing colleges. So and I you was. were able to do it. And yeah, the colleges, yeah. for those realizes that's when you really sort of get your whole, you, your fill in, because you start to be able to go, oh, I can do anything I want. These kids are dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was I was I doing what everything I love to do in my hour? No, but could I do an hour? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. were ready to do it. It was like 40 out of the hour I liked. Oh, cool. Because you, know you can get away with 40. Yeah. So you were in one of the biggest comedies around with, mm -hmm. with, with an Oscar-nominated actor. Mm -hmm. well, when I, t I want you to tell me what he was like. And then all of a sudden, it changed the trajectory away from more serious films, I think. Mm -hmm. it didn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden, they, they could no longer... And you had done all this stuff before, Shakespeare to the Clock Watchers to really, you know, David Russell film. And all of a sudden, you, now you're this hysterically funny guy. Mm -hmm. and, and 
you were really young too at the time. Thirty-two. Yeah. So what is that? How did that? Did you, wh what's your feelings on it? I I, I like that you brought it up because it made you a lot of money. I think. I think that you are saying stuff, and I think that you like it, and part of it you have an issue with, and I kind of agree with you. Because I'm the same way. I'm a guy who's really funny, but I'm also a serious artist at the same time. So I feel like I can identify with that. Well, I f well, first of all, it's like this. Um, unfortunately, we're in a business where people literally can't see you. Um, until it's the last thing you did. Oh, yeah. They have absolutely zero vision. So if you were a homeless crackhead, you could never be a lawyer, right? You literally have to, like, put on the suit. It's called acting. So that's number one. And number that's two... Called act it's called acting! Acting! Number two is it's... Comedy is harder than drama. hundred times harder. Okay. Comedians don't get the respect. So I was doing these cool parts in these movies, and I always felt... I was funny, and I never felt I got to show my funny. So then I did this show called The Jamie Candy Experiment to show my funny, and that really caught on. And then that led to Malibu's Most Wanted. And then I said, okay, I'm going to become a name. And so you become a comedic name. Now, what is great, and with that is trials and tribulations. Oh, yeah. Because you're only as good as your last movie, because now you're a – you're an entity, so your entity has to work. And if your last movie doesn't work, then you get a little cold. So then you have to go back into the trenches of acting. So I loved it because I was becoming a comedic breakout star. Did I do everything I wanted to do? No. Um, do I regret it? No, not at all. Malibu's is a wonderful, hilarious cult movie. It's now on Netflix again. Um, but now in my career... I'm getting kind of back That's what I feel like. to where I was. And you'd be amazed at how many casting directors who I started out with now and have told me this and say, it's nice to see you acting again, <laughs> which is... Which, which I started... That's which, what I'm saying, which I have an issue with. Which, yes, because we are acting. We're comedians. It's acting. It's going on. Just because you're doing comedy doesn't mean you're acting, but you're getting something to bite off. Well, I'll let you comment in a second, but... And I'm going in there, and I'm dancing for my dinner. I have uh -huh. to go out because they're really good projects, and I just got a movie we'll talk about in a little bit, and it's a great cast, and it, they need to see it, and, and that's okay. But it's a humbling process because – but but what bums me out is as a comedian to this day, even though it's getting more and more, it's just they don't get the respect oh, nothing. that the from, other from, side from does. From Charlie Chaplin – to you know, to Jackie Gleason, to you know, it's Joan incredible. Rivers. To, I mean, Joan Rivers was a a career where she never really felt like you can tell from watching the documentary. Never really felt like, and she said acting was her thing. Very, she always took it very preciously. She was always so careful. I saw her in Broadway, in Block. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, the Neil Simon play, Broadway Bound. Yes, she played the mother. Yes, I was. I even got it now. She was brilliant. I'm not doubting And I it. thought, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Because she could also tell a joke. Like, God forbid if you have multi-talents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But she was so strong in one, it can overshadow the other. You know? But I just saw Maz Jobrani, which is so funny. Wonderful I'm, comic. I just saw him at the factory, and he's killing, and he just did his Netflix special. And last night i'm watching law and order and he's on and it's a total drama uh -huh. and i was like took me a minute i go hey Maz, that's great do am i surprised not no. one iota is the town going oh yeah probably which is very frustrating so no i do love that i did it but because i at the time i was just auditioning and auditioning and auditioning and that made me a name and so i was getting offers but now i just let you know i'm diving back in and i'm going into the phase of like i'm trying to get you know acting cred respect Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at your career. Let's look at some of the pictures. Uh -oh. Tell me about the, which film it is. What's this? this that's is, Tremors Five. But that is who's that with you? Now that's Michael Gross. That's oh the okay. You know family I, ties. Oh my God! I thought you know I, I thought I know what I love. You know so much, but you really don't know anything about my career. No, I don't. It's really <laughs> terrible. It's really wonderful. I'm going. Don't ahead. don't 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 <laughs> diss me. On that's my own me show. and you I'll, right I'll now. I'll start to look cry. at Tremors. Look at Tremors. Another. Okay, that's me and Arquette from Scream Two. Oh that was God. a scene where we. But then we kind of added libbed a little. He's really talented. Yeah, me and David had really a great, great time. Great at improv. Yeah, he is. That was last year. That was Heartbeat. For now, me. I love her. 
you love Melissa, yes. Oh, it was Melissa George. Yes. She was on the film, uh, The Therapy Show, Treatment. In Treatment. I think she oh, got nominated. She for was Globe. fucking brilliant on this. I was like so, so blown away by her performance. Well, she's a good actress. She's a great actress. So sexy, too. Yes. Ice uh, Cube. That's Ice Cube. That's Three Kings. God, you look so young. You're a baby. Thank you. I like to. Let me see if I can get. No, this is Bo Finger. Um, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Steve. Martin. That's one when I kind of did. What tell I, me a story. There's got to be something. Um. Let me see. Oh, there's multiple. That's things. really like. That, that was that the was Illuminati like, of comedy. I mean, that was like, and but such different came from such different worlds. Yes. You know, Saturday Night Live. Yes. Which was just the you know the pinnacle of hip cool, and then of course Steve Martin, who came from such mainstream comedy. Well, he was Saturday Night Live too, though. Steve Martin. Yeah, but he was really mainstream stuff from we started from. I think that just being on that set every day, it was like watching George Foreman and Mike Tyson fight. Like, but I'm not fight, but I work. would say like Streisand singing. <laughs> you see Streisand and Bette Midler together. Um, it okay. would be if they were if for they were doing a sing off for the community. But it was just watching two heavyweights who are amazing and who can dance with each other and and around each other and who got along, but you know had their own space. And I just I just lapped it up, you know. And it was. What did you learn from it? Was there something you learned watching them? <sighs> Uh, was there a uh, takeaway? Many things. Eddie, Eddie could do. He he literally would come on, look at the scene, you know, kind of pretty much kind of do what was written and just go off. And he was just he just make up anything. He's incredible. Like just you know just mm. bow. And Steve was great at also doing what was written because obviously he wrote it. Another author shepherding us into getting the scene he wanted working with frank the director but also then frank oz right yes encouraging others within the scene to try something so mm. he was always a wonderful chef so but really really inviting oh yeah and that's a, that's permission the, the minute we get, it's a permission is the most important thing what i said to you earlier i want to say again before you go to break the most successful people are the most inviting. You know, I got one of my first breaks was Ellen. To this day, I thank her. And I did a, also like one line on her show. She liked it so much, she added three more. I did three episodes. She was like, you're funny. Go do more. Like She's like, you're funny. It makes everyone funny. Damon Wayans was like that when I did his show. Yeah. Yeah, he would, and he would do the same thing. We'd shoot the show, and then he'd say, okay, improvise. And then he didn't know that I loved to improvise. And you, and I always watch. I've talked about this so many times on the show. But if you watch this, any of this, the shows that I was on, you can see that sometimes he's laughing, not as the character, but he's. And I could tell he's laughing at me because he was like, "I can't believe this." Yeah. And he was so great. I just love working with him. So we, he's awesome. We, we that's what it is. It's that they give you the permission and they let you go. That's By the way, is it hot? As a as a uh, in here or not? No, I'm not hot. Okay. I think it's just me. You're just feeling, you know, it's just being around all my energy. Yeah. We're gonna take a break here at Absolutely Jake we're Stewart. What commercial we're we'll going to? We're, we're gonna go to Jake's commercial, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> we'll be back in just a Pizza second. Hot. <laughs> That's his thumb. We'll be back in just a second. Please stay with us. Don't change. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider. Hey guys, what's up? This is Matt McAndrew. Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Oakley. And I'm Corey Cool. Hi, I'm Martha Madison. This is Slick Johnson, a.k.a. Black Jesus, b.k.a. Godzilla Lungs. Hello, I'm Aaron Roberts. Yo, what's up? This is Craig Wayans. Hi, this is Brad Williams. And as you can tell, I have never... I... Dang! <laughs> Speedy Don. And I am the fabulous Stephen King. What's good? It's your boy Marcus Falk, man. We keeping it lit. I'm Money B. What's up, y'all? This is Crazy Bone in the building. And it's your boy, Street Symphony. And you're watching. I start. Hi, I'm Moxie. And I'm Nicole. And we're the ladies of Suicide, Suicide Bells, Bells radio. radio, the world's leading BYOB radio show. Pour a glass of your favorite tipple. Tune in on Wednesday nights between 8 and 9 p.m. as we discuss life, liberty, and the pursuit of free nipples. I just it would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? People think flushing your tits is easy, right? And it's actually kind of hard.
And we're back. We're talking to my pal, uh, Jamie Kennedy, here on Absolute Jason Stewart. And we were showing some pictures of... Show us the last two, Brent. Oh, my God. What's this? Boiler Room. <gasps> man, that was with Ben Affleck and uh, Vin Diesel, right? Yes. Oh, man. Do you want to know the story on yes, that? Yes, yes. I want to know everything. That was written by Ben Younger, another auteur. Yeah. Who's a great... Tell me what's Ben, ben Younger's other big thing. Is there another one? I mean, Enemy of the State. Yes, and that's why you that. did the other film with him, right? with Will Smith. Will Smith, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and he wrote this movie because he worked in a, in a room where you would do, like, bad stock trades, and that room was Jordan Belfort's. So Boiler Room was the fictionalized account of Wolf of Wall Street, Belfort gets locked up, so we're a little ahead of the curve, goes into a white-collar country club prison. His roommate is Tommy Chong, who we know, because you would see him around and his daughter Precious. Remember Precious? Oh, yeah. She would come to shows, and Tommy Chong would hear these stories, and he's like, man, you got to write a book. He writes the book, which becomes Wolf of Wall Street. And now, so it's like Boiler Room was like the fictionalized version of what it really happened. I think it was a really good film that got a little lost. It was. You know, not a lot, but Ben Flat, Ben. Great. They both doing, are great. Doing so many big things at that time. And I was sort of, I thought, wow, how'd they get him? And, I th and they, when I went to see the film, I was just blown away by it. It was a f great one. You were terrific in that. Thank you. I had a. Really, really. That was a part where they let me improvise a lot. Yeah, but it was just so in the moment. It was fun because you're working with a bunch of young guys and you're all in New York and you're feeling yourself. You know, it was eight weeks in New York City. You feel like you're running the town. And you guys had a well, You could oh see there was yeah. this whole camaraderie of things. And I think that's... You would hang out at night. Yeah. I, I, I just love that. So w tell us about The Ghost Whisperer because this... I, I, you're going to... You, you, said, you said in between break, you go, I know your work, but I don't know all your lady shows. Because this is a girl show. Is that and a I lady like some, show? Oh, it's definitely a girl show. Girl shows, mm -hmm. but I don't. I, but I never watched this one, and I like Cameron, mm -hmm. Mayhem, and I, and Jennifer Love Hewitt, which mm -hmm. was your gal pal, mm -hmm. my you gal pal, <laughs> you, or whatever. Scraping. That is a gay. Well, you didn't <laughs> live with her. You didn't marry her, rather. You live with her. <laughs> your gal pal. Um, she's your girl, a girlfriend. She's hot. Gorgeous. She's hot. I love you. Say gal pal. It's so funny. Well, yeah. um, I got my own words. Um. So I did, yeah, I did that show. Did you become uh, together during the show or before? <sighs> no, uh, you asked me like five questions right there. I gotta figure out. What, well, like <laughs> I got the show, and then we, st and then we were, s we were working together closely. But this is really, I mean, this kind of a show, people don't realize that you were on it for how many years? Five years? No, two years. Two years. This is a kind of show, but the show was on a lot longer than you were on it, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a I was on the last two years. Last two years. This is a real. This kind of show is like getting on a show like that. This is what I call an audience show too, because mm -hmm. it wasn't an industry show. It was an audience. The audience all over the country loved it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like an award Emmy show mm -hmm. like Entourage, which you also did because you've done those too. And I think that it makes you really famous in a completely different way. Bro, you are so correct yeah. because I just did the Schomburg Improv, which I love. Shout out to Schomburg, and it's like middle. America uh, uh, in Illinois. Illinois, right outside of Chicago. Yeah, I, I work there too. And it's the mall. Funny Bone. That's where I work. There's, 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 a, funny there's bone. a Funny Bone. There's a mall, and it's one of the nicest clubs in the country. But I can't tell you how many like housewives come up to me from my show and go, "Oh like, man, love you on the Ghost Whisperer." Some of your jokes were a little different than I thought. But it's <laughs> oh, because you're like a different person. Today. Yeah, I'm a little more. I think you're going to be this yes. boyfriend, you know, this good-looking, you know. Appreciate. Yeah. Good looking part, but but it, it was that was your what I call your hair and makeup show. Hair and makeup, totally. But it's it 
it opens up a new thing. And, I, and the comedians, the people before, before me were two other comedians. I took over for Jay Moore, who took over for Aisha Tyler. So there's three different, and Margaret Cho also had a run on that show. Did she? Isn't that crazy? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. We well, all they, like, they liked interesting people. We, we, we all mixed up. They, they mixed it up, the show. It was fun to do. Yeah? Yes. So you, you have the career that I would, I, I, should, I have to stop saying, the reason I'm hesitating is because my friends keep saying, don't say that you have a career. Okay. Yes. I do. It's going well. Yes. But, you know, uh, you have a career that I'd want to have. I mean, okay. I think it's just your, it's extraordinary. Now, this new project is you say you're getting back to your acting roots and stuff. Mm -hmm. What is it? Tell me all about it. Well, I just did two projects that are more like acting. So one came out in the summer, and it was more called... More serious acting, but still not... You know, comedy is acting. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, one was called Surviving Compton, which was the story of Misha Lay. Remember her? The R singer. No, no more Oh, life. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a Lifetime movie, and they're really pushing it now come award so we'll see what happens well they're but doing something there i heard they're releasing them in europe as films possibly because they're getting the uh, this is a film that was made i'm right so yes it's their movie yes when it's their movie they really push it if you're in another one of their movies the and b team right here they, they just put it on and it's someone get a note on e uh, facebook going hey i just saw you in this movie well, what movie oh my god it's on tv yeah <laughs> Well, Leslie Greif, who produced uh, Texas Rangers, and I believe the Kevin Costner, Hatfields and McCoys did it. Leslie Greif is a big producer. Yeah, so he did it. So uh, we got a lot of love for it. Hopefully, come Emmy times, there'll be a little something. So there was that one, and I played Jerry Heller, who was the Paul Giamatti's in Compton, but it was a different version because Leslie was friends with Jerry, so he really told me how to do it. So I wear a wig, and I look totally different. I know. So that was like I my saw this movie. Oh, okay, so you like that, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the second movie, I did two other movies. So I did a part in a John Boyd movie called... Uh, He's a character. Damn, I forget the name of it. But we just shot that where oh, I play a husband. Okay. And, but I just finished last week a movie now. O'Reilly's Peak was a John Voight's one. I just finished another movie last week, though, which I'm excited because they're selling it at Con, and there's stories about it. Is it and it's called The Spinning Man. And that's with Pierce Bronson, Guy Pierce, Manny Driver, Guy Pierce. Alexander Paul, and Odea Rush. Alexander Paul is in it? No, Alexander no, she would Ship. <laughs> that's my best and my girl. What I like about that one, Jason, is is, is it's um it's serious. Now I play I'm still quirky in it. But still it doesn't matter. But it's matter. a thriller and it's with really credible people who the pe that the town takes seriously like i take any comedians i take anybody seriously i you know i don't care if you're a comic that works the chuckle hut you know you're out in the community but you know the community takes certain people seriously but anyway these people are, a guy pierce is such a great actor mini and pierce bronson so anyway that's i just finished and they're selling it at con right now so hopefully it will come out in november are you gonna oh go to con? no because ah. i have oh, one more movie which is we just had a huge screening heart baby i'm in that and that is a this is gonna sound crazy don't this it's like a gay rocky oh i'm not kidding you it just had a huge screen and did very well and it's a story about boxing prison a, a man and his and his boyfriend who ends becoming a woman and it's a crazy story that happened in the Who's 80s a boxer? who was a boxer and he didn't go to the olympics because they were prejudice against his his boyfriend it's a great underground story wow. and that just screamed. what are you playing that i play one of the prisoners oh so those are like four projects that i'm really excited about wow so knock on why don't you want to go to con because no one uh, told me to go and i'm not there they're not in con the only one is the spinning man they're selling it. if someone's like pay me oh, and oh, i get to walk to cross it i'm not gonna go around like some chick wait, with wait, big fakies the what? Walk the crow set. Is it's it the crow what set. is it? What is it called? It's called the, the cross it. Uh, oh, the croissant. Croissant. Well, yeah. the girls that are like walking around the big fake one. How do I get a part? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like you want to go there when you're doing it correctly, not just hanging around. I went to Sundance three years in a row. That was films. Sundance. This is. Con. It, oh. And and it's very. But I was at Con once without a film. The crow set. The, the cross set. Chris said, I don't know. Some, whoever knows how to say it, tell us. Tell us. Uh, Jewish guy from the Bronx. I don't know anything. Um, and I, I, going to Khan was probably the most overwhelming experience. 
fucking so big. It's like Sundance times 10. Did you walk the crow set? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't in a well, movie. Mo- oh. I, I wasn't in a movie. I just went because I had a manager that would go every year to sell films. Oh. And I was in Holland doing, I don't know if you remember the comedy festival. They used to have Big Night of Comedy in Holland. How was that? Uh, that was fun. That because must have been amazing. They do, they do, Colin does comedy in theaters only. Wow. And I got to go to Amsterdam for the first time. Mm. That was how we both <laughs> <laughs> again with the sign. <laughs> both of us like. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so we have chemistry. Yes, we have a lot of chemistry. Beautiful chemistry. I'm, came up to me and that was like midnight, and I didn't know what was this was going to be. I thought we were going to be in your closet, <laughs> and you said I, not at midnight anyway. We were doing a gig together. Yeah. So I said, and we were all hanging inside the front. I said, Hey, would you do my podcast? And you went, Yeah, sure. And you had this look on your, fr- your face, like. I like Jason. He's a nice guy, but oh God, I can't. What's this going to be? You know, and then I, no, I try to do the real thing here. You do. This is great. I, I try to make it nice. Yes. So you tell your friends. Hey, wait, is this done? Are we We're done? We're almost done. Wow. Yeah. So tell people how we can get a hold of you. Um, you can go, my right. Facebook is just Jamie Kennedy. Um, it's a public page. Go at the Jamie Kennedy on Instagram because someone took Jamie, a, a chef actually. Really? I, Jason underscore Stewart. Cause, and I didn't know you had because there's a million Jason Stewarts out there apparently. I came to it late. And Jamie Kennedy on. Uh, so I'm, s- I kind of dabbled in podcast. So if you go to my Instagram, there's a podcast called Hate the Break. There's only a couple episodes. So I just started that. Well, thank you so so much thank for being you. on the show. I thank so you for having me. I so appreciate it. Thank Until you. next week, everybody. Take care and thank you so much for watching. Yes. I can't believe that. I can't believe that.